So I'm back working on my crosscut saw again today. I use this saw to buck up firewood at my cabin during the winter. So far, I've cleaned all the rust off the blade, jointed all the cutter teeth, and last night I finished filing all these teeth here. So now it's time to get to work on the raker teeth. So now things are going to get a bit more technical. These are the cutter teeth, and this is a raker tooth. They're very important. But now that I've filed all these teeth, all these raker teeth are a bit too high now. In this diagram I made, you can see that the, the cutter teeth alternate. We have a bevel on this side, and then this tooth, the bevel is on the other side, and it continues that way all the way down the saw. This raker tooth needs to be 12 thou of an inch shorter than the cutter teeth. And that number can depend on what kind of wood you're cutting, whether it's hardwood, softwood, greenwood, or dry wood. I mostly cut dry wood with my saw, so 12 thou is the right number. So I just need to quickly explain why these raker teeth are so important and why they have to be so accurate. In this diagram, we have a cut made by the saw. It's really exaggerated, of course. And we have a cutter tooth with the bevel facing this way, and it makes a slice in the wood like that. The opposing tooth with the bevel on this side makes a slice in the wood on this side. And you're left with this piece of wood, and the raker tooth is essentially a chisel, and it'll come in and knock off this piece of wood right here. And that process is repeated over and over on the push and the pull. So now we need to file down all these raker teeth. To do that, I have this gauge that I made. It slides over top of the raker tooth and on the bottom, it rests on the cutter teeth. You can see that little bit protruding above this gauge. I need to file that down flush. So I just finished filing all the raker teeth. They are now 12 thou of an inch shorter than the cutters, just like they're supposed to be. And I know that because I set my tool using this leaf feeler gauge. So after you file the raker teeth, you're gonna be left with this flat spot like this. And what you have to do is round this over. Because this is a chisel, it wouldn't work very well if it was left flat like that. So you have to, to round this off with the file, filing up to the tip, but don't file the tip, otherwise you'll make it too short again. So hopefully you're still with me. I know this is pretty technical stuff, but it's got to be done. So I went and filed all these raker teeth, and they're still a little bit too high. This here is a pin gauge. It's got a little bolt that protrudes 12 thou of an inch below the, the surface here. And I can check that with my leaf feeler gauge. And it should just clear that tooth it shouldn't rub at all you can also put a, a straight edge on it and run your leaf feeler gauge underneath and it should just clear that tooth so i probably spent the last half an hour checking each tooth making sure it's 12 thou of an inch shorter than the cutter teeth you really want to take your time with this it's probably one of the most important steps and I've been marking the teeth with a marker just so I don't lose track. Uh, there's one more step after this for the raker teeth. So we've 
We've already filed them. Now we have to sledge them. We have to hammer this tip to put a really defined chisel edge on it. I don't like doing this part because it makes me nervous, but we need to take this swedging tool and put it on the, the tip of the tooth and strike it with a hammer, making that really sharp, defined edge on it. So it's a little difficult to do this with the, the camera right in the way, but I'll try. It's really hard to see, but there it is. So all the raker teeth, oh, there you are. All the raker teeth are set, they're swedged. I know it's a really long, boring, tedious process, but it has to be done. So in my next video, I will be setting the cutter teeth.